You're listening to Colonel Holler. A Christmas special. Here, Gablena, let me wrap these dragon eggs in newspaper so they don't perish before you get a chance to hatch them. Hey, <laughs> nay, don't, don't bother. They for my nephew. He's just gonna eat them. Gablena, really? You know it's bad luck to eat dragons. Mr. Chip, I ain't never heard that before. Well, it sounded right when I said it. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's true. Bad luck, perhaps. Poor taste, indubitably. Goblina, won't you consider another holiday gift for your nephew? Look at this delightful toy ghost train, for example. Okay, but <laughs> ain't just gonna eat that too. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. Hey, Chip, where is that thingy? If you mean that ominous glowing crystal that was sitting on the counter, I just sold it to Wayne the Warlock. Chip... I was going to use that as the star on top of the tree I made out of swamp nettles. Now I don't have anything to put up there. It's bad enough that I had to improvise garland out of toad. They're pretty because they're poisonous. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. Bonita, I admire your holiday spirit, but I'm rather flummoxed by your insistence on singing that evergreen death ballad ad nauseum. Yeah, Nita. And don't you know any of the words besides, oh, Christmas tree? First of all, no, I don't. Second, why bother with other words when, oh, Christmas tree is all you need? Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go find a new tree topper. Do, 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 do. Oh, Christmas tree, oh. What are the words anyway? Is it, oh, Christmas tree of Christmas? I thought it was, please don't avenge your murder. No, no, I believe it is. How lovely are your branches? Well, that doesn't make any sense. Branches aren't lovely. They're just brown sticks. You ready to check out, Count Fangula? Yes, please. Just this marble coffin pillow. It's for my mother-in-law. Hey, any excuse to keep her in the coffin, right, my man? My mother-in-law is an absolute gem. A cursed gem. Hey, Rochester, do we still have that Zoltan action figure? Yes, I believe Pumpkin left him in the shoebox castle behind the coat rack. I can't believe it. Oh, great. Thanks, Roddy. A couple of twirls of toilet paper and Zoltan's going to be the angel on my Christmas tree. Oh, no. Wait, it's not in here. Pumpkin must have had it in his backpack when he went to Earth. The search for a topper continues. Benita, you certainly are in a good mood, even despite the maddening parade of Black Friday customers. Who got all the poison toads? Ah, ah, I'm not too long. Are you kidding? Black Friday is ten times scarier on Earth. I'm just relieved I'm not sitting in a news truck outside an electronics store at 5 a.m. trying to update the list of trampling casualties. Hey, Nita, remember when I got trampled on camera when we were doing that story about the half-price snowshoes at the ski shop? Do I ever. I can't believe those people managed to put the snowshoes on before they even got to the register. Your face looked like a pair of argyle socks. Oh, argyle socks. What a great idea. I want to get some for Albert for Christmas. Albert doesn't have feet, Mimi. He's a sheet ghost. He just floats. Oh, right. Hey, Mimi, we do have argyle scarves. Perfect. Thanks, Nita. You're very welcome. Say, Mimi, can you think of something cool I could use for a tree topper? Um, how about using one of those pretty gift bows? Uh, a bow? What kind of psycho would pick a bow instead of an angel or a star? I put a bow on my tree, then I chased everybody with an axe. See? Now I want to buy this axe. 20 zips. Hey, I have an idea for your tree topper, Nita. Where did I write down those instructions? Okay. From the ether, from the mist, come before me, Quintus. Yes, my summoner. How do thee commandeth me, Quintus the Imp? 
I compel thee to sit atop Benita's weird Christmas tree. I'm thousands of years old, skilled in six-plane magic, and you want me to be a Christmas decoration? How humiliating. Not just any Christmas decoration, Quintus. I compel thee to look beautiful and light up really twinkly and never run out of batteries. As you compel, so I must spell. Chip, what a great idea. It's perfect. Hey, Quintus. Ma'am? Imp, I compel thee to sing a festive tune. As you wish, my summoner. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, your needles itch my bottom. Well, those are definitely not the words. Y'all in Cattle Holler. <laughs> Cattle Holler, Cattle Holler. Cattle Holler, Cattle Holler. Cattle Holler, Cattle Holler. Cattle Holler, Cattle Holler. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Craven, for that spooky and informative presentation on precipitation runoff and its myriad effects on our community and its ditches. Now I'd like to call on Mrs. Weaver, Chair Spider of the Social Events Committee, to read the highlights from the monthly events calendar. Hi, everyone. Hello, meeting room C. Hi, hello. Before I get started, I just wanted to make sure everyone had gotten a chance to try our mold cider, which the Social Events Committee has generously poured into cozy mugs with cinnamon sticks. How is the cider, everyone? Wonderful. Now is the portion of our meeting where we all go around the room and say an interesting rumor that we heard. Mrs. Weaver, I don't believe this was on the circulated agenda. Oh, don't be a fuddy-duddy, Mr. Ghost. Well, I suppose it would be all right as long as our town secretary is ready to transcribe these accounts so that they may serve as an historical document of our town for future generations. Bonita? Huh? Oh. Oh, right. Yeah, I keep forgetting that you appointed me town secretary. Okay, perfect. Let's let the weaving circle go first. Venice. I heard Count Fangula is miffed at Mrs. Count Fangula because her mother's holiday visit has been extended due to poor health. Which is ridiculous, because the woman's already dead. She's just trying to cause marital strife. Ooh, Ooh juicy. juicy! That's oh, a that good was one. Good. Do you have a rumor to share, Mr. Eyeball? I saw the old coot who had the hellhound Goliath at the doctor's office picking up a surgical girdle to wear under his Grim Reaper robe. Oh, he's in such poor health. Surgical? Is he having surgery? He didn't tell us. Uh, okay, hold on a second, everybody. I have a request for a rumor to be shared via teleconference. Nita, did you seriously bring the haunted Earth telephone to the town meeting? And a microphone. Does Pumpkin have the floor? Hello, Pumpkin. Hello, Pumpkin. Hi, baby. Oh, look, it's that Pumpkin. Okay. Hi, Pumpkin. What you been up to back on Earth? I've been busy. That's wonderful, Pumpkin. Do you have an interesting rumor for the room? I heard y'all gonna put on a Christmas play, and everybody was saying that Pumpkin will be the star. Oh, we are. We are going to put on a Christmas play. We were just going to tell everyone about it. It's going to be so festive. I'm going to tell you all the details just as soon as we're done sharing interesting rumors. Minerva? 
I heard from Hal and Jack at the radio station that the Elsewhere Council is going to send a town inspector to visit Colonel Holler. The Elsewhere Council? That's correct, Bonita. The Elsewhere Council is comprised of evolved beings who have completed afterlives and graduated to another realm. All we know about it is it's not here, it's elsewhere. And the rumor you heard was true, Minerva. Why would some inspector want to come to Kirtle Holler? Unless, of course, he wanted to personally high-five me, Chip Clearly, for acts of bravery and handsomeness during the Halloween portal crisis, which he probably does. Oh yes, Chip, I'm sure that's what this whole meeting is about. All in favor of high-fiving Chip across his smug, invisible fanny? I <laughs> so bad, Ms. I need to share my concern with you, citizens. A visit from the Elsewhere Council is significant. It is their job to help towns like Kirtle Holler make sure we are fulfilling our afterlife goals. My fear is that the portal crisis and its aftermath has upset the balance of our town. I worry that we have grown complacent and, if you don't mind my frankness, spoiled. Hey! cinnamon sticks for the hot and cozy apple cider. I want cinnamon. We need to make sure we are living up to our town motto. Serve soft, large or small. I know we are all sad that we missed Halloween on Earth, but it seems that sadness has manifested as a mania for the gaudy trappings of Earth's winter holidays. Oh, who wants to do Secret Santa I this do. year? I love I Secret Santa. That. that sounds oh, so fun. I want to. Perhaps you can use the spirit of the holiday can season a as a reason to perform acts of service for our town. Which brings me to the Christmas play, so I'll take it from here, Mr. Ghost. Next Saturday, we'll be having auditions for the town Christmas play. We're staging the play at the former caretaker's opulent and fabulous mausoleum, so dress nice like you got some class. Sign up for an audition slot here on this clipboard that the lovely Tarantula is holding. Who's the hero of this play? Who's the hero? Good meeting, Albert. You know, I think everybody will calm down after the holidays. I hope you're right, Bonita. But in the meantime, I hope the inspector will detect the town's true spirit and not see the candy-addled monsters who left marshmallows all over meeting room C. Not to worry, Albert. I'll take marshmallow cleanup duty. I'll... Okay, Inspector Baylor, now we move on to the next part of our tour, the town square. Seems square enough. Let me check that off my list. Are you being sarcastic, or are you really checking whether the town square is square? Sarcastic, yes. I think it's by you, ma'am. Now you've got to tell me, who's that pile of rocks over there in the corner? That pile of rocks? Oh, that's Rocky. Hello. I never would have guessed what a fool I have been. He's a stone golem who was wrongfully imprisoned under the corrupt reign of the former caretaker, but now he's a budding ice cream entrepreneur and friend to all. Tale as old as time. Okay, Inspector, this giant ice cream cone looking thing in the town square is the town's fright crystal. You'll notice it's supercharged and gleaming, and <laughs> I don't want to brag, but since I kind of acquitted myself like a hero during the town portal crisis, I think it's safe to say there's a little bit of Bonita in that twinkle. Makes sense. Real flashy. Gaudy. Some might say it looks cheap. Oh, okay, well, you know, I know you're from this big fancy elsewhere council, and maybe you don't know that we can't control our appearances here in Kirtle Holler, so I'm going to use this opportunity to educate you on the dangers of judging a book by its cover. I think I read that book. Here's a spoiler. People will disappoint you no matter what they look like. Well, that's pretty heavy, Inspector. Would you like to stop here at the Stone Golem Ice Cream Shop slash Coffee House? I hear it's open mic night for moody Cyclops poetry. Sure. 
Let me buy you an espresso. I'd like to see if I can make the vein on the other side of your head pop out to match this one. Oh, you get that smarmy look out of your one giant eye, pal. Caretaker Ghost asked me to take you on a tour of our town. And as town secretary, it's my duty to do so. Although, giving tours to surly town inspectors who won't stop writing everything I say in a notebook and then won't show me the notebook wasn't in the job description. I'm not writing down what you say. I'm sketching you. A piece of work like you belongs in a museum. Okay, here we are at our next stop, the new jail facility. If you were briefed by Caretaker Ghost, then you'll remember that the old jail, which was full of wrongfully imprisoned ghouls, was sucked into the portal moments after a couple of otherwise useless teens freed all the prisoners. No, I certainly didn't do any rigorous research for my sacred duty as a town inspector. That was a lie. Seems these notebooks might serve a purpose, besides giving me something to look at instead of an angry dame. Okay, I get it. So you're fully briefed and prepared, and I'm just going to be quiet and open the door now and introduce you to these people you clearly already know. I know who the useless teens are, all right. In fact, I need to speak with them. Here you go, sea monster. Here's your stupid present thing with free gift wrap. Where's a bow? I ain't putting on a bow. You try peeling a million little paper squares off of sticky bow butts and mashing them all up with your dumb monster fingers and see how you feel about bows. I want a bow! So, Inspector, our new jail facility is here in what used to be a millinery until the proprietor got sucked into the portal. That kind of put a cap on new business. Get it? A cap. Because a milliner makes hats. Okay, I was just trying to liven things up. Stop blinking out loud at me. Anyway, these two rude and unhelpful teens who you can now see are wrapping that sea monster up like a mummy in some festive paper with a snowman pattern on it are Casey and Terry, the ones you said you're looking for. And now that I've brought you here, I'm going to leave you to continue your tour with acting sheriff Pastor Munch. Pastor? I don't know what stupid... Well, bye-bye, Bonita. <clears throat> My goodness, what happened to poor Miss Von Wagenkamp? She stomped off like a minotaur at a maypole dance. She's all right. I was just getting under her skin is all. Well, I'm sorry to hear you didn't get along. Nah, we get along fine. In fact, she reminds me of someone I used to know very well. I used to get under her skin like a burrow bug. That's a lovely simile, Inspector. I may use it in my next sermon. You're the pastor around here, and the sheriff? Yes, I'm Pastor Munch of the First Expired Church of Colonel Holler. I've only recently been appointed sheriff because our last sheriff got zooped through a big old portal. Let me tell you all about it. Oh, there was this big I know all about the portal, sir. No need for story time. You say this is the new jail. I don't see any prisoners. Well, turns out Colonel Holler doesn't really have a criminal element. The only inmates I ever get are werewolves who like to lock themselves up before the full moon. Their spouses sure get tired of them tearing up all the throw pillows at home. I see. Let me make a note of that. Locale. Hat City. Population. Zero. Wallkeeper alignment. Fearful good. Aggression. Nil. Well, Inspector. I know you're a busy man, what with your carefully scrutinizing the town with your one giant eyeball. So let me introduce you to Casey and Terry. Bonita texted me that you wanted to talk to them. You think we put enough bows on that gross sea monster? Yeah! I crammed a bunch in his old slime man! Good. Excuse me, girls, I don't want to interrupt your duties at the Forced Community Service free gift wrapping station. But this is Inspector Baylor, and he needs to speak with you. Hey, we're rebellious. What are you looking at, Blanky? Casey Luann Crude Baker, Terabeth Francis Rupture Clap. I would like to give you both an official commendation from the Elsewhere Council for your service during the Halloween portal crisis. The council was pleased with your actions in freeing all the inmates of the Curdle Holler prison. <laughs> your middle name is Luann? That's hilarious! Shut up, Terry! What's a commendation? That's a school word. It's an award, and it comes with a prize, which I will now hand to you. 
It looks like a fruitcake with a bow on it. Fruitcakes are for mammals, man! It's a golden fruitcake, hand-baked by the ghostly golden fairy man who paddles the golden gondola between realms. I don't want some old cake from some old boat, man! This thing probably been sitting in a bucket of worms in his own boat! I assure you both that this prize is very significant, but I must be on my way now. If I wanted to argue with a pair of jokers, I'd go back to Reno and play Canasta at the Royale. Pastor Munch, are you to accompany me to my next tour stop? I'm ready to go, Inspector. Let me just give my coat. Girls, you stay quiet and enjoy your fruitcake. I think we want some old dumb fruitcake that's crazy. Yeah, right. Like I'm gonna eat some old fruitcake. So embarrassing. Let's just leave it here. Yeah, one of these old cheapskates will get it and wrap it up in this dumb paper. Let's go get some ice cream, man, I'm starved. I want bubble tea. I sure hope we catch Dr. Sawbones before he goes on his lunch break. It sure looks busy in the waiting room. All these sad and ailing ghouls. What a pity. Well, if it isn't Pastor Munch. Hi, Pastor Munch. Are you sick? Come sit by me and talk. Just don't give me your cooties. Maybe in a moment, Ms. Weaver. I'm in the middle of taking Inspector Baylor here on a tour of the town. Are you feeling okay? It's horrible, Pastor Munch. I've got a little splinter in one of my eight hands. Will you say a prayer for me? A splinter, you say? How incredibly brave you are. Subject, spider, bearing, irresponsibly upbeat, internal regard level, off the charts. And you're the town inspector. Hey, everyone, the town inspector's here, and he's writing a report on everybody at the doctor's office so the council will know who to send get well balloons to. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, I assure you that's not why I'm here. Let me introduce you to the waiting room gang. I'm the Widow Weaver, and I have a terrible splinter, and this is Gary Gristle. Gary, you look so pale. Do you have zombified fever? Did you get a nasty rat bite when you were out looking for brains? Gary suspects his vitamin B levels are low. Vitamin B is in brains? No. Nice to meet you, sir. And this is Enchan Man, our big circular metal friend who used to cover a hole in the stadium. Why are you here, Enchan Man? I had the sniffles, and now I'm losing my voice. Losing your voice? Right before auditions for the big Christmas play? How are you gonna sing your solo? Enchanted manhole cover with case of sniffles. Main concern, Christmas play auditions. Bearing, flagging. Demeanor, whiny, unprecedented. Brother Enchantman, Man, don't you worry. The inspector here is writing you up in his report to the Elsewhere Council. And he's going to request some lapel mics so we can all say our lines in the Christmas play without straining our voices. Pastor Munch, I don't know what gave you that idea. The Elsewhere Council is a body of graduated super beings that monitors the adherence to afterlife goals. There is no AV closet full of lapel mics. Yeah, don't be silly, Pastor Munch. The Elsewhere Council is very busy and very important. And they only handle serious matters, like Christmas miracles. Yeah. Mrs. Weaver, I'm afraid you're also mistaken. The inspector is going to fill out a Christmas miracle request form so that Enchant Man gets his voice back just in time to sing at the Christmas play. Yeah. Because he wished for it. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Sir. It's an air horn. I wanted your attention. Mine too? Everyone, now listen up. Protocol dictates that I observe town without comment, but your wheedling ways have caused me to reconsider in favor of plainly stating my purpose, so there is no misunderstanding. Due to the energy change detected from the town in the wake of the portal crisis, Girdle Holler is under consideration for re-theming. Oh, oh, no. I didn't wish for it. Will that be brave? Oh, re-theming? Is that what it sounds like? I think I'm going to be sick. Yes, Pastor Munch. Your town is themed for Halloween and has been for centuries, but it's my job to determine whether another theme is more appropriate. <laughs> Inspector Baylor, Dr. Sawbones will see you now. I've got to speak with a doctor. 
if you'll excuse me. Can you believe it? That crusty old light bulb, my theme Colonel Holler. Oh, that inspector is such a stern man. I don't know what we're going to do. He might become friend. Do you think so, Gary Gristle? We're going to have to really wow him. Miss Weaver, I know we can get that inspector on our side. We've got several days and a secret weapon for plucking his heartstrings. Now a Christmas play! Pastor Munch, I really enjoyed hearing all that great gossip about the inspector and his threat to retheme the town, but I'm not entirely sure why you had to take me along on your pastory house visits in order to tell me. I really should get back to the boutique. Well, Bonita, you are the town secretary. It's important to have documentation of my pastoral duties. Oh, I have not been writing any of this down. I probably won't even remember this in like a week. Well, be that as it may, we've arrived at our destination. I'm here to help a parishioner with a spiritual crisis. Oh, hey, summoning Simon. Did you move your living room onto your front porch? Why? It's pretty cold out here. I'm having a spiritual crisis. And that's why I'm here, Brother Simon, to provide you with invaluable counsel and non-judgmental support. Plus, I brought you this gift. Golden gondola, golden raisin fruitcake. Didn't you tell me that Inspector Baylor gave this fruitcake to Casey and Terry? Hush, Bonita. Cursed fruitcake, I compel you to the doom of the white elephant gift exchange. I think he meant to say it. Thank you. I have no time for pleasantries, Harridan. I'm having a spiritual crisis. Well, is it lack of faith? Puzzling over your role in this turbulent afterlife? You accidentally stole a pack of gum and want me to go to the convenience store with you to apologize to the nice man? What's the nature of your spiritual crisis? Well, I summoned a bunch of spirits and they're all over my house. And they're all over my house. And they repeat everything I say. And they repeat everything I say. Oh, so that's why you've got your lazy boy parked out here on the stoop. Yes. The porch is the only place the spirits can't hear me. It's quite annoying. It's quite annoying. Oh dear, I can see how that would be vexing. It's more than vexing, it's maddening. It's maddening. And it seems like they only repeat what you say. <laughs> I know, I'm at my wit's end. I'm at my wit's end. <laughs> Goodness gracious, what are you all doing out here in this chill? You look like an ill-prepared wagon train. Hi, Mr. Goliath and Goliath. Hey, buddy. <laughs> we are helping summoning Simon with a spiritual crisis. Does the whole town have to know my business? Does the whole town have to know my business? Confound it. Confound it. I can't win with these spirits. I can't win with these spirits. Uh, I'm the spirits. I'm the spirits. And I'm very stupid. And you're very stupid. Oh, we are indeed dealing with an intelligent foe. Simon, you ridiculous man. I took one semester of summoning at the community college, and I'm already more learned than you. There's one thing summoned spirits fear above all else. Is it the boogeyman? Is it love? Stop with your terrible guesses. No. It's the hounds of hell. That's it. Go get him, Goliath. <laughs> Peace at last. Peace at last. Shut up. Shut up. Well, I suppose I should be bowing with gratitude, old man and dog. Here, take this gift as a token of what I presume should be appreciation. Oh, golden fruitcake. Mmm, you shouldn't have.
Man, it sure is weird to be back at Bat Singer's old mausoleum. Yeah, I'm glad the city requisitioned this building for civic use, but it's pretty gross to be reminded of that old leather-winged cretin. Remember that party he had, where we snuck in as celebrity imposters, and those gargoyles threw us into the catacombs? Yes. Precious memories. Hey gang, you guys ready for the Christmas play auditions? Judging from all these pyrotechnic flash cartridges he's got stacked up, it seems like Mr. Goliath has a very singular creative vision. He's just like me, Minerva. Creative is my middle name, and I can't wait to try out. I memorized everybody's lines. That way I can say them along with the main person talking. Why would you do that, Chip? That's just twisted. For dramatic effect and moral support. Oh, looking forward to that. Uh, Minerva, are you trying out? Oh, cripes, no, honey. I'm running the lights. And the old coot has Roddy out trying to find a living Christmas tree to use as a set piece. Well, I hope Mr. Goliath is going to take down those massive paintings of Batsinger before the play. They are creeping me out. Are they moving? Yeah, honey. They're animated paintings. It looks like magic, but it's just tech. Some of these models have speakers embedded for sounds, too. My daddy always said, do good, don't do wrong behind the barn. Yuck. Check it out, Nita. You can press these buttons and it turns the sounds on and off. My daddy always said, do good, don't do wrong behind the... Hit a dog once, shame on him. Hit a dog twice, shame on you. Your mama is the only person who knows when you're fibbing. Fanny about now, and you won't be able to rest on your fanny later. Why would I want to press a button to animate a painting in which that villain is wearing dressage gear in a barn? That man was the worst. I hate being reminded of him. Oop, these art buttons are springy. Hit it all once. My Hit it daddy all always once. said, Shame on you. Don't Hit do it wrong behind Your mama is the only person fanny about now. Chip. Listen. Your mama is hit my fanny. Your mama is hit my fanny. Well, it made me laugh. Come on, Chip. I think I hear the piano starting the warm-ups. <sighs> oh, Bonita, thank goodness you're here. You're just the assistant I need. Assistant? Uh, okay. I mean, I was gonna try out for the play. No need, darling. I've got just the role for you. Very important. No one else could play it, and I won't hear of anyone else auditioning for that part. Oh, okay. Is it Mary? Bonita, please. You're a classic vamp, not an ingenue. And you hold your face with a distinct world weariness. A bit of suspicion. <laughs> Ancient anger. Mm. Yes, see, exactly. You're making that face right now. Now come here and press... Play on the boombox for me. I don't know which button it is. It's the biggest button! Hey, Nita, remember we're supposed to help Pumpkin do his audition via telephone. You mean our dear Earthbound prize-winning portal hero? I'd love to include him, but it just wouldn't do to put a telephone inside the manger. How was my Mary supposed to be enraptured by a telephone? Way ahead of you. Yeah, we put the telephone inside a regular pumpkin. And then we swaddled the pumpkin. A swaddled melon? Well, I've seen it all now. Could this be any more grim and wonderful? The part is yours, pumpkin. Hear that, pumpkin? But I want to do my monologue. People, people, um, monsters. Gather round now. Now, I'm sure you all know me as the old reaper who goes power walking around town with his hellhound. <laughs> but I'm also a theater aficionado, so when Miss Weaver asked me to direct the Christmas play, I said, Are you sure you'd not rather do Streetcar? And she said, No. So here we are. Woo, uh, round two! <laughs> yeah. In my production, yeah. I have only two rules. Number one, no one say the name of the bard's Scottish play. It's bad luck. And number two, no chewing the scenery. Goliath, that means you. Ooh. And the rest of you, I mean that both figuratively and literally. Gablena, stop chewing my scenery. <laughs> okay. Finally, it has come to my attention that the town inspector is coming to see our play. He has threatened the town with re-theming. <gasps> so we need to really dazzle him. 
And with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and post the names of everyone I'm relegating to tech crew. So make sure you wear your stage blacks. You are not the stars. Uh, what? Now I need sopranos and altos on this side by the alcove. Right. I'm going to remember your Tenors, baritones, basses <laughs> over by the piano. <laughs> Terry, you're still standing there. What are you, an alto? I don't know. I just sing loud. Barb, give me an F3. Terry? Ah! Oh, dear. There goes the chandelier. <laughs> oh, this play is off to a great start. And then Goliath did his business at the stage left entrance, so now the whole cast has to enter from stage right. I had to get up in the catwalk and reposition all the spotlights. That's a great story, Minerva. But I asked you about your theater troupe's use of the caretaker's former mausoleum. I need information about the facility's use. I would take you there now, but there's a closed rehearsal going on for the choir. They're doing trust exercises to, quote, enable them to be more vulnerable on stage. This Christmas play is certainly taking up a lot of the town's energy. They really want to impress you. Huh. What a bunch of goofballs. Full of themselves. Drunk on Christmas spirit. Be easy on them, Inspector. They're good kids. This is the Kirtle Holler Library. Albert said you needed to see our new card catalog software. Yes, that's right. I hear you upgraded from a haunted tome system to a green screen running Boolean functions. Exactly. Citizens are now better able to find specific information they seek. And ancient book curses are down 36% since I installed the new software. Is this the main librarian? Hello, ma'am. Mimi. Yes, hello, citizen screaming Mimi. Can you answer some questions about this new software? Um, I don't think she can. I'm not the greatest at computers. Mr. Baylor, let me get a demo set up for you. I'll just be a minute. Inspector, you picked a great day to visit the library. I'm just about to announce the winner of our official holiday reading program. <laughs> holiday reading program, ma'am. That's right. Whoever checks out and reads the most books this month is eligible for our grand prize. A ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Yeah. Well, it's not really a horse. It's a centaur. I'll be wearing a festive holiday sweater on my human torso. Yay. Thanks for donating the prize, Mr. Follis. Now, after looking at the totals, it seems our first two winners had to be disqualified. One for returning all the books covered in seaweed. No! Boo. And the other because they checked out 100 books, but ate half of them. Hey, hey, no, that ain't fair. I read all the books before I ate them. Go on, quiz me on them. Sorry, Gablena. The winner is Pastor Monk. Oh, oh, dear me, what a blessed man I am. Do I get to make a speech? Well, uh, I'd like to thank you all for inspiring my book journey. Inspector, I've got the computer ready for you. Oh, look, did Pastor Munch win the reading contest? Yes, his prize is a sleigh ride. I'm green with envy. I know it's kind of silly, Inspector, but have you ever gone on a centaur sleigh ride? Those guys will really knock your wig off. Talk about a need for speed. Can't say that I have, ma'am, but I did once go on a carriage ride in Central Park. It was around Christmas time. Light snowfall, special lady friend. You know the drill. Sounds like a nice memory. It was. It's the greatest love of all to share a book with somebody. Thank you. Enjoy the prize, Reverend. Hey, now, we gotta have do overs. I read all them books, I, I won't eat them no more. I didn't know that was disqualifying. Well, um, I, I just remembered I have a prize here for the winner who 
eats the most books. Is it me? It's gonna be me. Go, Pluto! All right, yeah, give me that. Give me, get right here. Huh. Golden gondola. Golden raisin fruitcake. Huh. Ain't that something? Looks like my rare and valuable gift is being passed around like a collection plate full of hot potatoes. Uh, I'm gonna take this home, uh, for my grand goblins. Back to work. Chip, is there a reason you're strutting around the store in proud little circles? You sound like you just want a beauty pageant. What? Oh, I didn't see you there. I was just thinking about this gift that I got for my good friend and Chan Man. Just look at this thing, Nita. It's as big as my head. Well, maybe not that big. But it does look familiar. Yep. Vi wait, what? Nothing, Chip. Please continue. Has he got that old fruitcake? Hush! Hell! What did he say? Ignore us, Chip. We're happy that you're happy. Look, everyone! Baylor's burden has passed to Chip! Oh, <laughs> oh, Chip got the gag gift. It's not a gag. It's just a dud. Okay, all right. I get it. There's been some re-gifting going on. Maybe it's changed hands a couple of times. Like it was on fire! The important thing is, Enchant Man thought of me, and for that, I'm touched. Now who wants me to open this thing? A boy's present. But give one your pumpkin so we won't be jealous. Where's Rochester? I want him to see this too. Oh, he's out finding a Christmas tree for the play. He's going to fight it, tame it, and walk it over to the mausoleum. Christmas is great. Open your present. I have no idea what this is. It's a food it's cake. Food cake. Who knows what it is? Maybe it's a tambourine or one of those airbrush t-shirts that make your body look like a hot body. It's a fruit cake. Well, Chip, did it meet your very high expectations? Are you kidding? I love fruit cake. And this one's got golden raisins, Nita. Gold. I can't believe nobody wanted this. But that ain't real gold. Does Enchan Man know me or what? He's so thoughtful. I mean, what a guy. Chip, wait. What's that piece of paper sticking out of the bread? Tail pumpkin. I can't see. It's some kind of note. It says, Dear Coral Hall Resident. Swallow, Chip. <clears throat> this is a regeneration pass for you and one guest. Show it to the boatman on the edge of town and he shall take you to a place in time of your choosing in the land of the living. Congratulations, have a blast, and enjoy the fruitcake. Whoa. Oh my God, Chip, this is a big deal. You can go home. You can see Pumpkin. You're gonna have to make an appointment. I guess so. I don't know, it's kind of weird, but I don't think I'm ready. I'm kind of fitting in here. I'm, I'm like a celebrity now. Plus, my old life was... Complicated? Yeah, complicated. I don't think I can take this. Do you want to go home, Nita? I don't think so. It's also complicated. Nobody wants a re-gift. I think this is too big for us. Let's ask our friends to help us deal with it. We could use some of their ancient wisdom. No, no, Fibula, honey. You're giving me Janet Gaynor, but I want Scary Mary Philbin. Maybe I have all the moves, but I'm forgetting them. Lord, she sounds like Jean Arthur, but moves like Jean Autry. Move over, and I'll show you how it's done. Follow me. Slow burn gaze over the audience. Broken doll walk crossing left open palms. You're holding a soft boiled egg, do you see? Then do a split because we're pandering. 
And while you're down there, blow a kiss. Cause that's nice. Confetti, roses, accolades, and you're off the stage. Do you have it? I think so. Like this? How do I look? Hello, Martha Mansfield. It's a Christmas miracle. We may pull this off yet. Take five, Fibula. Oh, this is so hard. Going to go buy some cursed heirlooms because I deserve it. Minerva, dear, are you asleep? Did you catch the train wreck? Don't worry. I'll keep the lights away from her feet. Minerva, you're perfect. Now where's my innkeeper? Keeping it real. By the stables. Go ahead and swallow your fruitcake, Chip. We're on page three. Where a bedraggled Mary and Joseph, that's Mimi and Count Fangula, arrive at your door. They're looking for shelter. And Mary is with child. Scoot over, you old wiggle bottom egg eater. Oh, you're st- stepping on my tail. Excuse me, I hear talking from my bushes. And they don't have lines till scene ten. Mr. Goliath, I'm confused about my role. Why is there a secretary in this nativity play? It's called satire, Bonita. You're doing fine. Chip, are you still with us? I'm losing control here. Ready to become a star. Well, most stars do begin as guests. Anyway, Mary and Joseph want a room. But you say the place is all booked up. Give us a line when you're ready. Be gone from here. Sleep among the monsters in my stables. And write no story of my wicked ways. No, no. Bigger, Chip. What's holding you back? I guess I don't know this character. Who is the innkeeper? What's my motivation? Oh, brother. You're evil, Chip, but you didn't start that way. You had big dreams, but your father demanded you take over the inn. This isn't your life. It's his, and you can't stand it. Now everyone must suffer. Now read the next line. Innkeeper closes door. Congratulations, a star is born. Yes. This is really happening. After that, it's silent night, warble, warble. Rocky hangs the star on the tree, and we all gather around baby Jesus pumpkin in the manger. And then it's time for my big line. Uh, what line? And on this blessed day, the stars just shine on a precious baby, and everybody kiss him and hold his hand. That's not in the play, Pumpkin. You don't have a line. I guess we'll have to agree to disagree. Pumpkin, don't say that tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Okay, people, that's a wrap on the last rehearsal. Give yourselves a hand. Barring unforeseen catastrophe, we may actually impress the inspector and save the town. Now get some sleep and take it easy. I don't want to use understudies if I don't have to. Remember to show up early for spirit gum. And where are my stagehands? This donkey looks like a dog. Oh, it's Goliath. You're the best actor in this play, Goliath. But don't tell a soul I said so. Are we going to let the gargoyles take tickets? I'm going to wake up early to work on my enunciation. I'm going to work on my enthusiasm. The inspector's going to be so impressed. Uh, guys, can you hang back a second? The stars of this play need to make an announcement. So then in Chan Man, my best friend, rolled around the block and we got in line again. And the old man at the window says, haven't I seen you two before? Okay, what Chip is trying to say is he opened the inspector's present and it was a regeneration ticket for one resident and a guest. To any time and place on earth. I thought it was a fruitcake. Me too. It was inside the fruitcake, which is inside me. Are you going to leave us, Chip, clearly? It's like a bad dream. Not yet, Ms. Weaver. I've got endorsements to consider. Warlock wigs. Hair that moves. Because it's alive. What about you, Nita? Aren't you ready to go nine to five in the man's world? That's not in my five-year plan anymore. And I'm definitely not going back until my bank fixes their app. I can't hold the camera any steadier, okay? I just can't. 
We're being funny and making wisecracks, but it sounds like you need our help in making a very important decision. That's right. You guys have been in Kirtle Holler way longer than either of us. We want you to help us nominate someone to take the ticket. It's all so much I might be sick. There, there, Pastor. Point yourself away from my bushes. Who should we give it to? Whoever has the most likes on Instagram. It was I until my account was hacked. This is not true, baby. Albert saved our skin from the Batsinger debacle. Let's give it to him. That's very thoughtful, Minerva. But I will recuse myself, as I intended to finish the duration of my term. Let us choose another citizen who embodies the selfless ideals of our quaint yet terrifying town. Where should I install this truculent tree? It's so gnarled and menacing. Oh my. Over here, Rochester, you can tie it up in the stables by the hippogriff. As usual, I took the liberty of purchasing gifts for us to exchange, because you always forget to buy them. You can sign your names to them later, as is tradition. Thank you, Rochester. I hope rehearsal was productive. I'm sure your performances were all breathtaking. Yes, yes Rochester. Rochester. Good. I hope you all break a leg into splinters. We, we will. will. Well, he's feisty, but he's the tallest, most horrible tree I could find. He'll do justice to your nativity play. I like his look. Chip on Bonita, I'll see you at the shop. I still have some skulking to do. Sounds good, Roddy. You got it, buddy. Minerva, I've prepared dinner. It'll still be alive if we hurry. Right behind you, Roddy. Bye, Bye Rochester. Rochester! We're all thinking it, right? Thanks, guys. This feels right. We'll give Rochester and Minerva the ticket tonight. Man, what a tree. When we open the curtain and the inspector sees this thing... <laughs> ah, it's got me! It's got me in its clutches! <laughs> oh, Chip! <laughs> Unhand him, you tree! He's too handsome for you, tree. You let him go. I can't see where he is. His wig fell off. How's it going out there? Is it a hot crowd? It feels like a hot crowd. Well, we just lost our moon. I told you when Chan Man was too heavy. It was politics, Nita. We had to keep Chip happy. Now what's been going on out there? I've been hot gluing eyeballs onto these shepherd's tunics and missed the whole first half. Well, the first thing to know is we got confused and did the second act first. Naturally. Kablena asked for do-overs during We Three Kings, and Fibula scandalized the audience with her taxation census dance. Well, I expected as much. Anything else? Uh, Mary and Joseph forgot their lines and panicked and had an unscripted kiss. It was weird. Hmm, a mixed bag. How was the secretary scene? Did you remember your cartwheels? Mm-hmm. Doubtful, but that's fine. You're believable, and that's what counts. What about the inspector? Is he impressed? Does he have enough snacks? He's still here. Good. I told the gargoyles not to let him leave. Now let's listen. They're about to start the last act. Wherein our heroes seek refuge. And so the days passed that Mary would have a child. They looked for a place to stay, but there was no room. 
There was a convention in town for undertakers or something. I don't know. It was terrible. Innkeeper opens door. Why do you disturb me at night time? Uh-oh. Chip has made some choices. Mm, what do you mean, choices? He's wearing an eye patch. Right eye or left? Left. This play is a disaster. It is I, Joseph. We are here to have a child in your hotel. Oh, I'm so embarrassed that we kissed. Be gone from here. Sleep among the monsters in my stables and write no story of my wicked ways. We'll see. The time had come to deliver the baby. Oh, hey, when are supposed to be out here? Hush, the scene is started. You hush, you old buck tooth jump rope. <laughs> the time had come to deliver the baby, and he was born among the creatures in the stables. They wrapped that sweet boy like a mummy and placed him in a manger. Hey, that part was almost normal. Or at least, you know, normal adjacent. Keep me updated, will you? I'm repairing these angel robes. I swear these Frankenstein stitches will be the death of me. And here comes Rocky to put the star on top of our tree. Oh, this'll be nice. The tree's so tall. Rocky's on his toes. He's almost got it. Uh-oh. What? What's happening? What's uh-oh? I'm afraid Rocky and the sentient Christmas tree are locked in mortal combat. Well, I was afraid this would happen. What's the audience think? Can you see the inspector? They all look horrified. I'd say horror all around. In the good way or the bad way? Bad way. From a tree. Let me see. Oh dear. Terry's joined the melee. She's a scrappy thing, isn't she? We're off on the outside, but there's a diamond in there. I'm sure of it. Mm-hmm. Oh well, the bloom's off the rose. Might as well take off this girdle. I'm gonna send Fibula out there to distract them with some splits. Fibula, get out here, honey. Maybe she can help Goblena, who's doing a hornpipe jig for some reason. Minerva, can you hear me, darling? We're gonna run with it. It's avant-garde, it's camp, it's going to work. Start the pyro, we can pull this off. Really? Bonita, darling. Unless you're volunteering to do flip-flops across my stage, I don't have time for comments. See if you can get things rolling again. Guys, he says to keep it rolling. We're dying out here. Mr. Goliath says to keep it rolling. Um... Guided by starshine, some shepherds gathered at the stables and kneeled before the baby. Excuse me, that's rude. The angel said, do not be afraid. Peace and goodwill to all men. Oh, lordy! What's happening? Don't answer it! Hello! And on this blessed day, the stars did shine on the precious baby, and everybody kiss him and hold his hand. And he did the lie, of course. <laughs> Goliath, how did I ever let you talk me into this? I'll be up all night thinking about the little things we could have changed. <laughs> And there go the stables. What's the inspector doing? The gargoyles are holding his eye open. Remember, you told them to make sure he watched. Oh, good grief. Put me out of my misery, will you? Call the curtain. Let's hope he didn't notice our little oopsies.
Well, Mr. Baylor, what did you think of the play? Did you love it? I know I did good. I got in plenty of licks. You're a perfectionist like me, Baylor. I can see it. But on balance, would you call our play rigorously accurate or a raucous update on an old classic? Before you answer, remember what I had to work with. You want my honest opinion? We value honesty in Colonel Holler, particularly at Christmas time. Give us your candid assessment. It was, without question, the worst thing I've ever seen. It was baffling, offensive, about three hours too long, and my Cracker Jacks were stale. They were stale! Surely you're not surprised. The stage is still burning around an unconscious Christmas tree. You must know this was a disaster. Oh dear. Way to go, Chip. I know! Eye patch goes on the right eye! It was the tunics and we all know it. They needed more eyeballs. <laughs> Take it easy, folks. It's just a play. Who cares what Wentz Baylor thinks? This play was our last chance to impress you, Brother Baylor. Now you're gonna retheme our town. Yeah, what do you got? I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, what's the new thing? Is it nautical? I heard it was spice. Vampires in space? Undignified. <laughs> Wait, you thought a Christmas play would affect my report? But you just made that up entirely. Why would you even think that? We heard a rumor somewhere. I don't know where it started. People, I've been very clear about my purpose. As I said in my letter and upon my arrival, the Elsewhere Council heard about the portal crisis on Halloween and asked me to check things out. I'm here to see whether you're living your theme, service to others, big or small, as it says on the town seal. You are not. We have too been doing that! Yeah, Jeepers Papers, we was doing it! What is it I disagree. You're supposed to scare people, challenge them to examine their notions of self and the world around them but you were sucking down lattes and forgot your purpose. Does any of this sound familiar, townspeople? He said latte. I used to like blood, now I drink latte. It's so cold in here, where's my Snuggie? <laughs> Maybe if I squint, I can see the town that saved Halloween, but now you've regressed and lost yourselves in a malaise of Christmas nonsense. Nita, you're the secretary. Did you get all that? I don't like where this is going. It sounds like the speech you give before you lay off a newsroom. Ah, are we getting received? No. I don't enjoy this, but I have no choice. In two weeks, Curdle Holler must change its name. Change it to what? Pleasant Holler. We're gonna have a do over, everybody. Yeah. 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 Do I do all this. Let me get my head satchel. I'm afraid not. The council hates do overs, take backs, and bonus rounds. Now, see here, Mr. Baylor, I must object. I believe it to be in the best interest of our citizens that this town remain a Halloween town. I prepare to float over your head and file an appeal with the elsewhere council. Sorry, ghost, but I have the final say. In time, the town will adjust. It's gonna be fine. It's not gonna be fine. You think you can just come in here with your swagger and big blue eyeball that sees everything but what's right in front of you? I see just fine. And right now, I'm looking at trouble. Maybe I am trouble, cause I sure ain't pleasant. Also, eyeball up here. <laughs> These two have no chemistry, am I right? Mr. Baylor, calamities aside, what was your favorite part of the play? Any other questions? If not, I'm gonna write my report and pack my things. Oh, and who got my present? Who's going back to Earth? We are. We are. I see. Love's important. The most precious, terrifying force in the universe. 
worst mistake you can ever make is to forget something like that. Yeah, we know. Oh, well, congratulations. I'll have instructions for the rest of you tomorrow. Good day. Thanks for the pound cake! Fruit cake. Fruit cake! I can't be pleasant! I'm a witch! You <laughs> the I got in school was in conduct! <laughs> My fellow citizens, I understand your frustration. I too am fuming about this painful development. It makes me want to cut angry eye holes into my spooky sheets. But Baylord's not wrong. It's true, the town Frack Crystal has lost its malevolent luster. And we have to admit we've been a little lax around here. Yeah, but it's okay. All things change, and change can be scary indeed. But one thing we know about is fear, and we will get through this. In the coming days and years, we must do our duty. We will bear our fangs and erect us of joy. We will dig up our weeds and plant them among flowers. We will become pleasant. Maybe centuries from now, we'll get another chance to re-theme. But today, I'm going to put on some new sheets with little ducks on them to be sweet. I'm going to wear a suit that's not made of skin. I'm going to jog without a hockey mask. I'm going to brush my teeth. Did you hear that, Nita? Brush my teeth? I might as well be alive again. Speaking of, have you seen Rochester? He's supposed to leave tomorrow with Minerva. Over here. We're just mopping up Christmas tree blood in case we need it for later. There you are, buddy. You're going home tomorrow. Can you believe it? We're going to miss you, Roddy. We'll remember everything you taught us. I'm going to wash the dishes every day. And I'll stop taking off my shoes when customers are in the store. I'll miss your lies and your company. I wish I could do more to help you through all this pleasantness. You've done enough. Just think about your new life on Earth. Yeah, what kind of store will you open? They don't have to open a store, Chip. They can do other things. Actually, Minerva and I were planning to open an arcade. It's dark, there's machines that need fixing, and it's full of mutants. Enjoy your extra life, you two. Roddy, will you give me a hug? Tight enough to suffocate. Good hug. Hey, is that Baylor? Is he watching us? Ew, his eyeball is dripping. I forgot something. I'm leaving now. Oh, Mr. Baylor, before you go, if you could change one thing about the play, what would it be? It's late, Roddy. Turn off the TV and let the poltergeist go to sleep. But he's doing King Lear, and he just started leering. I may be a while. Come on. You know I can't sleep without a cold body in the bed. I'll be along shortly. I know that grimace. You're feeling guilty about tomorrow. Mm. You've read my thoughts exactly. And I thought you were the one with the exposed brain. Oh, Roddy, I understand. It feels wrong to me, too, leaving all our weird friends behind. But you deserve this, and I'll go wherever you go. I'll follow you to the Seven Hills. And I would follow you to oblivion. Well, if we are going to Earth, I need my cootie sleep. We have to be at the docks in the morning. For the boat ride, yes. I do look forward to feeling nauseated. We always did want to open that arcade. And give the blood code to everyone. I'll see you in the morning. Sleep well. 
my moldering Minerva. And when you come in, don't wake the monsters under my bed. I know the rule. My soul is not at peace. What shall I do? Yes? Hello, Mr. Granddaddy. Do not test me, Pumpkin. I'm having an existential dilemma. Why are you calling so late? My schedule was all mixed up. I thought it was sunshine. It's just as well you called. As it happens, I need someone to help me navigate the dark and twisted recesses of my mind. Oh, I'll give me some pumpkin rumors for the next meeting. What? Nothing, Mr. Rotterdam. Start from the beginning. Pumpkin, you will listen. As you know, a regeneration pass has come into my possession, which I am sharing with Minerva. We leave for Earth in the morning. Well, that's good, because you could come see Pumpkin. Yes, that's a consideration. But Minerva and I have misgivings. We don't know if we should leave during this ominous age of mirth and wholesomeness. The town may need our wisdom and guidance. Can you fix it, Green Daddy? Surprisingly, a good question, despite your provocation. Thank you. Anticipating trouble, I rattled some chains with the Elsewhere Council and got a copy of the inspector's file. But as yet, I find nothing to condemn the man. Baylor is as clean as a submerged cadaver. Well, hold on. I gotta go to the bedroom. If you must. I'll take the telephone with me. Not on your life. <laughs> Crazy thing. Look at these papers. Who are you, Baylor? Or should I say, Wenceslas Baylor, president of the fraternal order of Lucky Loos. Perfect attendance. Commendations for dotting I's, crossing T's, married to Iris? Wait, Iris, this woman is on Earth. My word. Okay, I'm back. I washed my hands. Pumpkin, I have unearthed a secret about Baylor. He is in love with a living woman. Hold on, I'm writing this down for the meeting. Baylor died some years ago and completed his afterlife service. But instead of rejoining his beloved Iris on Earth, he chose to continue serving his fellow man. He sacrificed his love to become an inspector for the Elsewhere Council. He was brave like Pumpkin. I could never do such a thing, but I know something I can't do. I have made a decision. And I helped. Yes, once again you play a pivotal role in history. Thank you, Pumpkin. I'm going to speak with Minerva now. Okay, love you. Bye. Okay, love you. Mm. Bye, Granddaddy. <laughs> Minerva, are you asleep? Hell no. You and Pumpkin are loud as banshees. I have something important to discuss. Are we staying? I'd like to. That's a relief. I hate living. I'm so glad to hear that, my fetid flower. There's something else I want to do, but we don't have much time. I'm going to wake up the town. Okay, but you had a big dinner. Should I grab your decomposing gas pills? Yes, please. What? I said yes. Inspector's report. It's morning, Christmas Eve. The fog is thick, hangs over the brackish water like the devil's breath. It's nice, dulls the senses, hides the pain of tragic mistakes. But here's the rub, the pain's only hiding. Close your eye, Maul, the monster remains. And maybe it's you. Is that Brother Baylor? Yeah, and he's doing that cool detective thing. Mr. Baylor, we're so pleased you could join us for this auspicious occasion as we prepare to send a couple of our citizens back to Earth. Of course. Watching returns is one of the few perks of the Inspector gig. Despite everything, I wish you the best. I'm not all bad. We know. That's why we're putting you on that boat. 
You're gonna go see. You're gonna go see Iris. Too early for library wine. I don't know what to say. That's an incredible gesture, especially since I gave your town the works. But I'm not a citizen, so as much as I'd like to go home, I'm afraid it's not possible. And how do you know about Iris? I will admit to blackmailing your colleagues to obtain your service record. I hoped to discover your weaknesses and transgressions, but instead, I found out about your Iris. Then it was just a matter of establishing citizenship. We stayed up all night completing the rites. We picked a thousand nits out of a harpy's hairbrush. We hung a Ferrari poster in Davy Jones's locker. And I changed the Minotaur's loincloth. Uh, yeah, plus a whole bunch of other stuff. We're very tired. Wentz Baylor, you are now a citizen of Colonel Holler. Here's a keychain. You did all this for me? I don't understand. I've been cramping your style since I got here. We know you're just doing your job, you big dumb eyeball. Besides, we didn't just do this for you. We did it for Rochester, too. It was his Christmas wish, and... Well, we have a bad track record with presents. Well... Yes, they're awful and confusing. Hey, if you're not going to use that orphaned walkie-talkie, can I have it? Actually, I'm using it to freak out truckers. We go from my truck, Damon. I don't know what to say. I wish I could change my report on Colonel Holler, but the council requires that I write in blood. Incidentally, I'm a bit woozy. Well, rest easy, Inspector. We understand the situation and we're prepared for pleasantness. We're sewing little dresses for all the girls. Well, that's pleasant. You better not put me in a dress, you up-top gumdrop! We still have some kinks to work out. And we better get wrestling in Pleasant Holler! Mr. Baylor, it's time to choose your companion for the voyage to Earth. How can I choose? You know your people better than I do, Ghost. We tried to pick somebody, but we all got stressed out. We thought it would be easier for you since you don't know us. Although you could have gotten to know somebody very well. <laughs> okay, we're wasting time here, everybody. Just close your eyeball and point, Mr. Baylor. Very well. But I'm an elected elsewhere official. So whoever I choose, that will be the final decision. Do you understand that? <laughs> okay, then. Onesie twosie. Picky choosy. You are the one. Oh, God! Axie Kathy? <laughs> What's that name again? Uh, Kathy. Her name is Kathy. He picks me! <laughs> <laughs> oh, good luck with that. I'm sure that'll be fine. I gotta go get my knives! What did she just say? She just said, it's gonna be real nice. Oh, okay. I'll be with you in a moment, Kathy. I don't care! <laughs> Mr. Rochester, I don't know how to thank you. I'd recommend you for a job on the council, but something tells me you're bound to this place, even when it's pleasant. Yes, Minerva and I have dug our own grave here, and we will lie in it together. Until we're one festering mass of flesh. That's really something. You people are tops, and I know you'll survive the rethink. Halloween is in your future, and in your blood. Yes, it is. And it's still a Halloween town for a few more days. So tomorrow night, we're going to have a big spooky send-off party. I even booked meeting room C for our frightful festivities. No! I'll have to book the media cart! Uh, the after party will be at the mausoleum. Okay. If <laughs> anybody's still awake after 8 p.m. Hello, we were out for walkies and saw some goings-on. What's all the hubbub? We're putting an eyeball on a boat with an axe-wielding maniac! Gracious, I saw that coming a mile away. I'm gonna take a photo for Instagram. Hashtag feelings. Minerva, in spite of everything, this will be a good Christmas. I'm glad we're still dead, but one day we'll have to go back, you know. Many doors, many futures. For now, I want to pick your brain. Oh, Roddy. Hello? Who's this? Miss Granny, can you help me fix my computer? 
Boatman's here. Come on. Let's look at the boatman. Oh, here he is. Here we go. We got to go more. Hold on, honey. We're saying bye to the inspector. Bye. Bye. Put on your life vest. Be safe. Are you ready, Kathy? I'm gonna go get my axe. What? I said you need to relax! Halloween forever! And Merry Christmas! Uh, Colonel, holler forever, y'all! Woo! We did it! Me do a split. I still cannot believe we avoided the retheme. Albert, can we hear the letter again? The one where the council called our town unpleasant? Okay, my friends, but this is the last time. Can we agree on that? We'll see. Start with residents of Kirtle Holler. Residents of Kirtle Holler. Your attempt at pleasantness has resulted in considerable terror and countless macabre scenarios. In light of the fear you caused yourselves and others, we are reinstating your status as a Halloween district. Yeah, you are. Your town has a lot of heart, but you're all insane. <laughs> That's my favorite part. Yes, you might say we succeeded, despite our failure to be pleasant. Well, we did try. I mean, Rocky was selling ice cream, so what if he ran over the customers? And Casey got that paper route. She delivered those obituaries every morning. Guess whose name was in the paper, Chip? Yes! Those were frightful hours indeed, but the experience made us confront our inner demons and enkindled our imaginations for scaring the jeepers out of others. Yeah, next year we'll help people confront the crap out of their inner demons. This is the true spirit of Halloween. And I suppose we have Inspector Baylor to thank for the opportunity. It was a wonderful Christmas gift. I wish he could have been here. I bet a good mausoleum party would really make him cut loose. Chip, stop rolling your eyes. You can't see that. This is a tremendous party. I'm glad I stayed up past my bedtime. It's great, Albert. I just wish these waiters could see me. Come on, you saw the wig. Nita, are you enjoying the snacks? I see crumbs on your décolletage. Yes, Albert. I feel like a lady tonight. <gasps> Albert, we have a problem. The fog machine stopped working. Oh, right. I think I saw Gablina drinking all the fog machine water. She called it party juice. I see many future. Whoop, I'm smoking. My word. Would you two mind retrieving the backup fog machine from storage closet B? Do you know where that is? Sure, it's up yonder ways, from the hall. By the thing? I'll supervise. Oh my god! This fog machine is heavy! What's in this thing? Some brimstone briquettes, I think. Maybe some free weights? You wanna give me a hand? I'm dying over here. Can't. I'll fall over. Okay. Hey, look. I think this hall leads to the residence. <gasps> Chip, is this Batsinger's bedroom? We have to go in there. Yes, we do. Nita, look at this. There's more of those freaky paintings. Oh, gross. Is that Batsinger's family? Look at those bloodshot eyes and the glistening spittle on his chin. Yep. Takes after his mother. Let's watch. I have to see this. After spawning in some barn rafters in the year of 1600, the illustrious Bat Singer Colony. Get out of my family portrait, Sheriff. You ain't a Bat Singer. Oh, but Belfry, ain't I kind of like family? Maybe like a dog or a son that brings me shame. Like a son. Now, where was I? We've heard enough. It's weird that he kept that take. You ready to go back, now that it's your turn to carry the fog machine? One more painting. This one is super creepy. Look at those needle-sharp teeth. I can't tell if he's happy or ready to eat us. Probably, Probably both. both. 
And where is he supposed to be? Is that a circus or something? Yeah, I think it is. Press the button, Chip. You press it. Wherever I am, my heart is with Colonel Holler. If you are there, I am with you. I see you, and I know your mind. I have never left my home, and I never will. Not for long, anyhow. In this world, there are many doors and many futures, but they all lead back to Colonel Holler. Well, that was a good take, Belfry. I know, Sheriff. Stop the tape. I found that unsettling. Me too. I feel weird now. Want to go back and make Albert read the letter again? Yes. Yes, I do. Oh, we hate you have to go. It's time to say bye-bye.